Hello class, welcome back to another one of my Denizen scripting tutorials. We are finally back again after five whole months, which I apologize for because I didn't realize how much time had flown by. But we are back and we are ready to kick it off with another new tutorial following our world and uh, interact scripts. This is going to combine the two in a way that's also going to teach something new. So if you aren't really too familiar with those other script stuff, uh, make sure to follow along because this is going to kind of combine two of them to create a third thing, which is completely unrelated, but yet still works with it. So without further ado, if you guys haven't already, make sure to hop on over into my Discord channel. Link will be in the description below. There's a lot of good stuff going on in there, a lot of questions being answered, and there's several plug-in, or not, sorry, sorry, not plug-in, um, several Denizen script people who know what they're doing as well as I do, and are probably more than willing to help out, which I personally have gotten a ton of help myself, and I know they are more than happy to help the community as well, because, well, we are all one big brain, and we all grow together. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So today's topic is going to be covering flags. Now what are flags? Flags are essentially a score system within Denizen that will help you keep track of specific values placed on certain things, whether it be entities, players, notes, the server itself, and in an upcoming update, items. Which, that one is going to be super, super awesome for um, a lot of us people who have been wanting to attach flags to items for various purposes. It's going to be, it's just going to be amazing. So we can't, you know, we can't wait to look forward to that. So um, let's go ahead and go on out into the field and get started. Okay, so if you remember from before, we left off with interact scripts, but we were also messing around with world scripts. So this is, uh, flags is going, uh, flags are going to kind of combine all of them. So. If you're doing interact scripts, which you don't need to, but I recommend it. Um, if you're doing interact scripts, we're going to need the citizens plugin. That's going to allow us to create NPCs. So we're going to create a new NPC, literally NPC create new. Um, right here is just the name, but we're just going to call him new because I am not feeling creative enough for a name right now. And we're going to get this creepy looking shark dude. Great, right? So, oh, sorry. Just give me a moment. Sorry, I had somebody come up at the door, but we're back now. Okay, so now that we got this Ender Shark looking thing, um, we're gonna create a new interact script. So let's go and get into that real fast. Here's not something important. Uh, so you're gonna need to go into your Denizen scripts, and we're gonna type in. Um, I'm just gonna type in flag tutorial. Dot yml. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, we are going to type in a new thing here. Uh, new flag assignment type assignment um, interact scripts I, wow <laughs> my typing is not with me today so uh, we're gonna call this new flag interact okay so new flag interact type interact of course Steps one click trigger uh, script. Now, one thing I want you guys to be aware of, if I haven't mentioned in a past any past tutorials, is with each new thing, you're always going to have to have at least two or more spaces in between each line here. So, as you can see, I put two spaces between each thing, so it literally looks kind of like a stairway with all the empty spaces. This is absolutely essential and will not work if you do not do this properly. So just make sure to give it extra attention when you're going through. And just, you know, when you get to the end of one line, add two spaces, add two spaces, add two spaces. So now we got our script and we're gonna do a thing here. And we are going to type narrate. Hey, break some grass for me. Okay. So we already know what this is like. We've done this before, but now we're going to add the flag thing. So what we are going to do is we're going to type flag player lawnmower. That's what we're doing today. So that um, this is how you flag a player via um, scripts. You literally just type flag player and then your flag name. And then if you want to, you can add a value. 
If you're doing a numerical value, you can do colon zero. This isn't required, however, it does help players just to remember that they're doing a numerical value with it. Because if you do not have the colon zero, it's going to default uh, to either true or false. Like this in future tags. And I'll tell you what I'm talking about as we get to it. But for now, we are just going to do flag player lawnmower. Okay, easy enough. But we need to set up a world script now for that to uh, go off of. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do a uh, new flag test type world events. Okay, on player breaks grass block. Okay, flag player lawn mower. Now, one thing we need to do here is we need to add a numerical value to it. So, um, so to add value to a script, you're going to type in a colon after you type the um, flag name, and then you are going to type plus plus or minus minus if you're going negative. However, we are not doing that right now. So we're going to type plus plus. That means every time we break a grass block, that flag's value is going to go up by one. But before we start talking too much of values, I kind of want to show you guys what it's going to be like in game. So we're going to go ahead and save, reload, and we're going to give our NPC an assignment by typing NPC select, NPC assignment, set, and then whatever our, um, it should be this, new flag assignment, yeah, so, and then your assignment name. So, now, if we right click on him, hey, break some grass for me. Okay, well, now we know what to do, and we need to check and see if we have the flag that he flagged us with. So, in order to do so, we're going to type in ex um, narrate player dot as underscore flag, and then we need to put square brackets here. This is where our flag input is going to be. So, we know that we called it lawnmower, so we're going to type it in here. And then we need to make sure we close it off with the uh, placeholder closing bracket. So, now if we do this, you can see it's going to say true. That is because we have the lawnmower flag. Now, since we haven't given it a flag value, if we were to just type player.flag lawnmower, well, generally it would say, um, it would literally just say this because it wouldn't have a value to it. But um, actually, I don't know why I assumed this. It wasn't in my last recording. Hmm. Oh well. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to break some grass. Okay, we broke three pieces of grass, so that means our flag value should be three. So we're going to type x player.flag lawnmower, and it is three indeed. So what's the difference between flag and has flag? Well, flag is going to give you a numerical value of the flag that you have on, on you. So we are flagged with a flag called lawnmower, and we broke three grass, which ended up giving our lawnmower flag a value of three. As flag just determines whether or not you have the flag, and this will always result in a true or false value. So if I type this in right now, it's going to say true. So what if I want to get rid of the flag? Well, that's easy. What we're going to do is we can type uh, ex flag um, open placeholder bracket player close placeholder bracket and then we need to give our flag name and then we're going to do colon exclamation point. As you can see whenever you press enter it's going to say action dash value equals delete or false. That means we no longer have the flag anymore and it will not be in any of our save files. So, if you want to test it out, you're going to go back to x narrate player dot has underscore flag lawnmower, and you're going to press enter, and it's going to come up with false now. We right click him, he flags us, it's once again true. Now, you don't, for our instance here, you don't need to talk to your NPC to get flagged, because it's going to do it naturally if you break um, grass. So how do we how do we set a checker to where it won't flag us every single time we break a block? Well, we're going to use a new thing called if commands. So we're going to do 
space space if player whoops okay actually you know what we're gonna keep going with it has underscore flag lawnmower colon and then we're gonna give two spaces to the flag here so now if i reload ex reload we can check our flag progress again by typing um, ex narrate flag lawnmower. True. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of that flag now. So we're going to type ex flag player lawnmower with a colon and an exclamation point. We're going to hit enter. And now if we look again real fast, this is what it should have shown the first time earlier in the tutorial. I don't know why it didn't, but this is what it should have shown. So this means we have no value to it because we don't even have a flag at all for it. So our if here is going to check whether or not we have the flag. If we do have the flag, it's going to add to our flag value. And if not, nothing's going to happen. So as you can see, player.flag lawnmower. I'm breaking some grass. I'm going to break three. As you can see, nothing went up. That's because we don't have the lawnmower flag right now. However, if we right click him and we type that, it's gonna come back with true. And now if we break grass, you can see that it's now keeping score. So let me go ahead and put all this back. And that's how you keep score with flags. Now, what if you want it to descend in a way? Okay, too easy. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go back into the file. We're gonna type a thing here. We're gonna type um, minus minus. It's pretty much the same thing. So we're gonna um, we're gonna save it. We're gonna reload. We're gonna check our score. Three. Okay. Two. One. And then zero. Okay. So we are at a flag score of zero now. Do know even if your score is set to zero, you still have the flag. It will always come back as true so long as there is a numerical value that comes up. So now we're going to talk about adding multiple increments. So say if we wanted to add more than just one at a time, we could do um, plus sign, colon, and then the amount you want to add at a time. We're going to go with five for now. So we're going to reload. And we're going to check again. You can see our value is currently set to zero. But now if we break blocks, it's set to, you know, five, ten, fifteen. 15. And it'll just keep going from there. It's a very easy way to keep track of certain values. And there are many different ways that you can use it. I I mean, I even kind of started to recreate my own sort of MCMMO system using this. Of course, it took a lot more work than just that and a lot more checks and balances for it. But that's pretty much the gist there of that. Now, what I want to do is show you guys this. So we're going to type in a new thing here. Um, instead of if player has flag, we're going to type if player dot flag lawnmower is greater than or equal to, let's say, um, let's say 25. And we're just going to move this one above because we actually don't want that in the if anymore. So if player dot flag lawnmower is greater than or equal to 25, narrate good job destroying the earth okay so this is going to give us a numerical value to reach so theoretically when we break five grass blocks we are going to get this narration and pretty much um, everything after will also give it because we're using greater than or equals if we just had it set to equals equals um, it would only work when we broke the fifth block however we're going to do greater than or equal to just to kind of prove a point here so we're going to type in ex reload. I believe we're at 15 right now. Yep. So if I break two more, that, and there it is. Good job destroying the earth. <laughs> Whoops. And now it's going to do it again for every other uh, subsequent one I break, only because we're using greater than or equal to, uh, as opposed to just equal to. But yeah, so that's how we are going to use that as a check. Now, what we can do here too is we're going to go in, um, I'm not going to delete it, but I'm going to put a little number sign at the front so it kind of cancels it out. Um, 
if player okay and now we're going to do another thing we're going to duplicate this line and we're going to change it a little bit so let's disable this one and we're going to do has flag lawnmower okay now we can get rid of this because if it's has flag it's not going to be checking for a numerical value so now if we have lawnmower we're going to uh, ex reload and good job destroying the earth and it's gonna do it every single time we break a block because we still have that flag however if we do ex flag player um lawnmower exclamation point well now you can see it is no longer spamming our chat with that because we no longer have the lawnmower flag attached to us oops i just spelled that there so ladies and gentlemen, that's a very kind of a lengthy tutorial, but that's pretty much the gist of how you use flags in Denizen. Now, of course, in the future, I will be going through more advanced tutorials on it, but for the time being, that should help you get started. You're just going to mix them with world events, which you can find on the um, Denizen manual with the events tab. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that you could easily find in there to kind of help you out and give you ideas on what to do. Uh, and of course, if you have your own ideas, you can just kind of go with the flow of that and just go with it from there. Uh, you know, straight out of your head. So, pretty much, uh, yeah, that's flags. If you haven't jumped into my Discord, make sure to do so because, exciting news, the next tutorial we are going to be covering, now that we know how to do all this stuff, is how to make your own custom quests with Denizen. That's a big deal because, well, I mean, I've been asked about it by a few different players. Uh, players and I know some of you are looking forward to it. So get excited get hyped class because next time we are going to be working on our first quest Thank you guys so much for watching class dismissed